Hello and welcome to this demonstration video of Norsar's M-Design software, understanding microseismicity via detectability and location uncertainty. So this is our software to evaluate sensor networks for microseismicity or induced seismicity monitoring. In this video, we'll give a demonstration of the detectability and location uncertainty workflows, uh, but we also have a separate video that introduces the concepts of M-Design and describes a bit more about why you'd want to use it. So please take a look at that video too. So M-Design is used to optimize, to validate and for evaluating different seismic networks. And it does this through three different workflows. So there's a detectability workflow, location uncertainty, and a focusing workflow. We have three different customer categories that use M-Design. So operators, service companies, and regulators. If I now switch over to the software, so users of Norsar Software Suite will be familiar with this interface. Uh, if not, it's very simple to learn. Uh, you can see on the left hand side, we have our object tree. This contains all the data and our models uh, stored for a particular project. You can see in this particular case, we have a hydraulic fracturing type scenario where we have six lateral uh, treatment wells and we have three uh, vertical observation wells. We can import different seismic networks, um, which we can then plot. So we have these uh, downhole sensors. We have 10 sensors on each of these strings. And we can equally show uh, our velocity models, or, or we could import these velocity models either from an external program, or we can build it within the Norsar software suite itself. In this case, my velocity model is quite simple. We've got constant velocity, except this reservoir layer, which has a fast velocity and it has some topography on it. We can then switch over to the workflow tab and you can see down the bottom, we have these three workflow types. So detectability, location uncertainty and focusing. I can click on detectability and we can create a workflow uh, where we fill in our input parameters and then we can save this workflow. I've already got one saved here with the results already computed. If we take a look at the different input parameters, of course, we have our, our background velocity model. We can double click that and choose whichever input that we want. We also want to specify which sensor file we're going to use. So again, we could double click and, and choose whichever we've imported into M-Design and plot those if we want. We also need to define our setup parameters. So to do this, we need to know something about the noise level at our sensors. So we can either choose uh, a single noise across all our sensors, or we can go ahead and change our noise level at each individual sensor. We need to have a, a target cube. This is where we're going to compute our detectability. So in this case, I've selected the same region as we have a velocity model, but we could um, focus, in, focus in on a small region if we want to. So after we've set all that up, we can go ahead and click run. And before we display our results, we want to define how many sensors have been triggered and just show the detectability uh, for those numbers, number of triggers. So in this case, um, I've hit three, but I can go ahead and um, change this to any number that I want. We can then display our results. So plot some cross sections through our, our detectability volume. And why this is important? Well, for a hydraulic fracturing type scenario, well, we need to get a good estimate for our stimulated reservoir volume. So you need to be able to detect as many events as possible. So we really need to understand what detectability we're going to have for a given uh, network scenario. Um, we might also want to satisfy particular regulatory requirements, say for induced seismicity. So we need to be able to show what magnitude events we're going to be able to detect. For this particular result, we can see um, it's quite simple. We have uh, good detectability close to our sensors, of course, and the further away uh, we can detect, we can only detect higher magnitudes. We can also see there's this 
layer within our detectability, which is actually matching um, where we have our fast velocity layer in our, our velocity model. And we can see, that, see this cu sharp cutoff in our detectability. We can go ahead and actually plot the ray paths at any single point within our, our volume, our results, and really try and understand why we're getting uh, the results that we have. So we can go to the right hand side, click on uh, plot ray paths. Uh, we can go and edit our location. So let's click 3000 for X, um, 4500 for Y. Click OK. Change our azimuth of our ray fan to be 177. And you can see here um, in this region of, of poor detectability, we have this shadow zone, um, so we're not getting any rays hitting these particular sensors, which is why we're getting low detectability here. If we go ahead and switch now to the location uncertainty workflows, let's cancel those uh, ray paths. So in the same way, we have our, our input parameters here, and with our velocity model, with our sensor file, the setup now is going to be slightly different. So as well as including um, a noise level, uh, because the location uncertainty workflow incorporates detectability within it, we also now need to define some picking errors and also optionally some uh, errors associated with angles uh, if we're using ray angles in the location uncertainty. We also need to define a set of magnitudes where we want to compute our location uncertainty. So we can do this for a single magnitude, or we can have a, a long list of, of different event magnitudes. So what's being done then is we're going to be computing um, essentially error ellipsoids at every single point within our target cube. And then to visualize that, we can plot any one component of those error ellipsoids. So for example, we could plot the RMS, or we could just show uh, the error associated with depth, which I've selected here. Go ahead and plot the cross sections. We can change our slices. We can go up and down through our model and see how location uncertainty varies. Again, we can plot our ray paths. So go to the right hand side, click on plot direct rays and pick our points. So in this case, let's choose uh, 1450 and 3700. Click OK. Change our azimuth now to be 136. And change our depth of my slice to be slightly deeper. Click OK. And you can see now the point that I've plotted my ray paths is in this region where we have really poor depth error. And you can see, again, we have this shadow zone within our ray paths, uh, which means that we're not getting any arrivals at these sensors, which is why we're getting a poor uh, location uncertainty at this particular point. So that's a very quick tour of M-Design. Uh, if I switch back now to my presentation, so you can use M-Design really to try out different sensor network scenarios. So in this particular slide, I'm showing four different scenarios. Um, one where we have two vertical strings, one where we have three vertical strings, a case with some surface sensors, or you can use both surface and downhole. We can plot our results and compare them and see which uh, particular scenario works well for a particular project's objective. Uh, as well as trying out different sensor networks, we can try different models. So here I'm showing the case for a 1D velocity model versus a 3D velocity model. So there's a lot of flexibility that you can incorporate within M-Design and really try and, and optimize your, your network um, for whatever your, your project needs. So thank you very much. If you have any more questions, please contact us at sales at norsar.com and we will be happy to provide you with an evaluation license. 
and please subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much.